So this is the last trip in our little F60, isn't it? Yes. We're down at Whitby. You can see in the background there, oh, the beautiful coastline. Over there, in the distance, we've got Whitby Abbey. We're going to be walking to that shortly. Yeah. But in all the time we've had the van, we've never reviewed it. So we're actually going to be exchanging the van this coming Monday. So we've had this one now for, for nine months. So we feel in a good position to be able to review it. We've, we really know the van quite well, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we know what we love. We know what we don't love quite so much. So we'll start off on the outside, then we'll go to the inside. And if anybody's got any comments or you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about it, if you're thinking of getting one. Yeah, let us know what you like. Let us know if you've got one and uh, any other points that we might have missed that yeah. might help others that watch the video. So this is the Auto Trail F60. It's a manual six speed on a 130 PSI engine. It was the only one that was in stock at the time. Uh, I think in a lot of places that we were looking at. So it's the one that we inevitably got and we've been really happy with it, haven't we, in many mm. respects. Yeah. It comes in silver paintwork. It has the option to have alloy wheels. We didn't have them at the time. I think that was an excellent £800 extra. You've got the electric hookup point. You've got your water filling point. Here you've got your LPG. Now what we've done is we... Um, I fitted the gas slow into there. We chose to have the filling point on the inside rather than cut a hole through the door. In here we also put our uh, spare wheel jacking bits and pieces. We've got our filling pipe for on site, a water pipe. We've got some spare toilet fluid. So it's just a general little space for sticking stuff in like this. And we've also got some washing up bowls. And our electric reel gets coiled up and goes in there from site to site. That's the water drain off point, the fresh water drain off. That's the waste emptying point there. It's got the the windows that sit onto the outside of the van. Now, something that we will mention when we get onto the inside is that there is enough space in there to actually get a tool through and potentially open up the little locking mechanisms on the window. It's got the two lay bike racks, or, or well, fitting points on the back. We've never actually fitted bikes to it, but they're there. And they're factory fitted so that it's all built into the framework of the van and. Uh, the weight of the bikes doesn't then distort the frame, uh, the panels. So down here you've got your, your Thetford toilet point. Now something that I find quite useful on this is when you take your toilet out, well at the moment, but there's enough space down the side there to get a bottle of your chemical. So that's quite a handy little... Yeah, cubby hole. Little cubby hole. And I also keep some latex gloves in there just in case it gets a bit messy. Mm, nice. It's got an outside barbecue point, which is really useful. You use that all the time, don't you? I think that comes, um, doesn't come as standard on a lot of vans, um, but this one it does, so that I'm constantly using that because we get the awning out. I roll the awning out and I love barbecuing outside, so that's, that's a really handy bit of kit. Mm. This is the outside locker. Now, one thing that we could do with more of is outside locker space. Now on the inside of the van here, on this storage space, this always annoys me, is the fact that we can only get one of these deck chairs in. So we have to store the other one in the bathroom. But the space in here, up to that, that little lip there, probably 85 centimetres to give you a centimetre of manoeuvrability in there. So if your chair's longer than that, you, you're gonna have to put it here and you've only got space for one chair here at mm. the front. We use these little plastic storage boxes that fit in really well. You've got a drop down shelf here and on top there we have the things like the Kadak, wellies and dirty stuff in a bag. We've got easy pegs, I've got a load of tools and things down in the corner. So it is a reasonable space. But we don't find it quite but enough it's not, for us. It's not we? enough. We'd like something with a bigger garage that we can fit all of the deck chairs, uh, outside carpets, tables, all of that stuff in the outside area so that we're not clustering up the inside. Yeah. Here you've got your vents for your fridge. Nice big fridge, 130 litres. You've got a standard size habitation door. On the inside here, you've got a little button. Operate your step. Nice thing about this van is though, 
as soon as you start the engine, Just you stay the there door, now. Keep the dogs in. <laughs> as soon as you start the engine, it's got a, a feature that pulls that um, step back in for you. So you can't uh, yeah. drive away and take anyone's legs out. Yeah, and a lot of more expensive vans don't have that feature, I've noticed. So that's no. a really, really good thing about this one. Uh, we had the awning fitted. That was an extra. But you're going to pay about eight or nine hundred pounds to have that fitted at a dealership. Now you can buy that online for about five or six hundred quid, and if you feel capable, you can fit it yourself. But you just have to be careful; you don't void any of your warranties. So this is the other little storage cupboard. Uh, we tend to use this for things that we don't really need too often. Uh, things like the levelling wedges for the wheels; they go in here wrapped in a blanket. We'll keep spare boots. Uh, bottles of lemonade and coke, things like that, spare water, backup water. We've also got um, UHT milk, just stuff that you don't tend to need too often, but you do need it during the course of your holiday. And it's quite a deep cupboard, I can get my arm right in there, but that's the underside of the passenger um, bench, bench seat. seat. You can't really access this from inside because if you lift the cushion off, you've just got a little access panel about yay big. And that's the same with all the seats, funnily enough. None of them are any good for storage inside the van. So the only external storage you've got is this and the other cabinet. Now, the bathroom is really good. It's got a lovely cabinet with lots of, of, of storage. We've got quite a big wardrobe on the right. We're on we're at Whitby at the moment for a few days, so three days. So this is full at the moment with stuff. So we do absolutely pack that. That's very useful. The sink is great, it's very easy to clean. And you've got your separate shower. But this is this is the bit that may be a positive for you and maybe a negative. It's kind of both for us. Um it's a mess, as you can see, and the reason it's a mess, and we thought we'd show it while we're using the van, is because there is so little storage outside in a locker that we have to use the shower for storage. So we just put this little extendable pole up and hang a few things on that, anything that's wet. But our pillows, for example, from the bed have to go in here in the day, our silver screens. We have to have one of the deck chairs in here wrapped in a dressing gown. We've got the carpet from outside. We've got... Um, bags, a shower bag. So obviously when we get to site um, a lot of that will come out, the carpet will come out, the chair will come out, the silver screen will come out, um, but the cushions still stay in, the bags still stay in, so it can just look a bit untidy. We're grateful for the extra storage, we're people that use the showers on site so we can use that as storage and we'd be stuck if we didn't have that as storage, so it's a positive in that sense. But I don't like how it always looks a bit of a mess and if you're somebody who showers every day in your own van then you probably find it a bit of a problem because there just isn't enough space in the outside locker uh, to contain all this stuff. Something else to just point out which has caught us out a couple of times is the shower tap. So this is the little shower lever and as you can see we've got um, rubber bands to keep it in this upright position because it pulls out this way. Um, in order to turn on. Well, because we're using the shower as storage, it's so easy to turn that on and drench all your stuff. And we have done it a couple of times and got our bedding wet and stuff. So um, I don't think that's a very good design. It's exactly the same in the kitchen, which you'll see in the kitchen in a minute, where it's easy to knock it and flood your work surface. So that's just something that's not a great design in this van. So the kitchen, we really like the kitchen. There's not many negatives to the kitchen at all, only probably two I can think of. So you have plenty of storage up here. We usually keep a lot of the food up here, tea, coffee, stuff like that. Well, you've got the router that we had as a, an add-on there. It's the Huawei router. And then as standard on these vans, you've also got the uh, solar charger control unit there and you've got a switch so that you can uh, use it for charging either your leisure battery or your main battery and there's a 110 watt solar panel on the top of the roof so that's really useful isn't it? Yeah and also this is the motorhome Wi-Fi um, internet sort of antenna and it's been really good we've never had a problem have we we'd have that again so that's been great so that's that and we love the work surface don't we we've got loads of work surface this is us 
when we're we're away and it's we're using it actually I'll, shall we show it when it's clear that's better so you can see the surface now so great sink look how big that sink is three burners this cupboard's a great cupboard So we've got our pans down here and we've just had the new Ingenio ones, the T-Fowl ones. So they stack so much better, don't they, babe? Um, and the, you know, the lids for those. Toaster, stuff like this. Brilliant knife and fork drawer. It's got a little light up here, which is quite handy. Yes. You can see everything in your drawer then. Yeah, that's great. That's automatic, isn't it, I think? It comes mm. on when you, when you open, so that's great. Um, slight negative about this cupboard is that because the, the door is on an angle like that, but the cupboard is straight, I don't know if you can see that. It means that when the door's closed, you've got this big gap. So in transit, everything on the shelf will fall off onto the one below if you're not careful. And also this drawer will ping out like that and bang the door. Um, it's a really easy fix though. We have a bag with bags in it. And when we're just traveling, we just pop that in there like that, shut the door. And that keeps everything completely secure so it's an easy fix the oven is great we didn't think it would be very powerful but it seems to be that's just wedged in there for travel so it doesn't move but it's a really good size i think you can do anything in that can't you little cupboard under the oven is really useful as well and there's a shelf which is just big enough for a tray and some tins We've got a narrow cupboard here, so some taller things are in there, you're washing up liquid, kitchen rolls, loads of tea towels, cleaning wipes, stuff like that, bottles. So that's really useful as well. It might have been more useful if it was like a pull-out larder, drawers that pull out, but it's still great. So there's just one more negative up here, and it's the tap, and it's the issue we mentioned in the shower. You know, if you have the tap in this position let me just let me just turn the water off oh it's off now it is off because i, I did it last night yeah and flooded the work surface didn't we and we're very careful but it just sometimes happens where you can you go to shut the lid the tap, and then obviously it floods all your yeah well you can see it now can't you it's dripping all over the place and it's because of that we never keep the pump on we all we, we turn the pump on when we use it we turn it off when we don't and the main reason we started doing that is because we were flooding the work surface all the time or we were flooding the the shower even but though it's, it's probably... infuriating though when you when you're on the toilet or you're in the toilet area with the door shut pump's not on you've got to come back out again turn the pump on in order to flush the loo what about the electrics that's the only socket in the van the th only three pin socket so i don't think that's great i'm glad it's in the kitchen so we can plug the kettle in you, but you could have, have more fitted but ov obviously as standard it, it only comes with the one so we've got um we've got that there one of these devices with all the usb charges but it just we're, we're careful that we don't overload anything but obviously that's that's the only place you can charge anything up or use a kettle or a a toaster in the van isn't it yeah but you do use an extension lead from that in one of these ports and you run it down below the yeah. back of the below the sofa. back of this seat across the floor there so that i can then have a charging point while i'm sat in this seat using the laptop at the table yeah so there's a way around it but i think there could have been a couple more couldn't there so is that 130 liter i'm not sure to be honest is it i think it is it's a great size for us. We do use it. We see it often people with smaller fridges and we think, oh, I think we'd struggle with that. But you've got you. the freezer section, yep. which is full. Our fridge is usually full, so we're very grateful for the, for the space. Just going to the electrics up here. Well, the main controls of the van. Obviously, this is the bed controller. This is your main control panel. So to turn everything off, it's that button. Turn it all back on. You've got... Uh, some illumination on the inside that's your awning light that's your pump which we tend to leave off this is also so you can scroll through all of your information these are your heating and hot water now these are the type that you just run your hand over the top and it all illuminates like that two final cupboards in the kitchen are by the fridge that's your big table now we only use this outside it's supposed to go in the center here but it is far too big for that so um, we've got another alternative to that. We just use this outside, which is great for working outside. And that fills that cupboard. You can't use that for anything else. And then a little cupboard here, which we use for dog stuff. This shelf's very handy, isn't it, as you come in? These yeah. two little shelves. 
we noticed we were looking at the F70 and they don't have these shelves and we think we'd miss these shelves if they mm. weren't there. Yeah they're very handy just for putting keys on or bottles things like that all your keys and other bits and pieces this your TV a... controls all those type of things that you're using every day. This usually sits on there like that which is quite useful so then you've got the storage here and storage in there. Yeah you've done well there babe. Thank you. <laughs> Right, so moving on to the living area then. This is my domain. <laughs> no. This is what sold it to you though, the van, wasn't it? It is, yeah. I, lo I love this space because of the drop down bed and you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Yeah. I kind of love and hate it. Yeah. Because you get the best of both worlds in the sense that because your bed's out of the way, you can have a short van, but you've got a lot of living space. Yeah. The thing is though, there's a trade off because you've got to get in and out of a bed over a ladder yeah um and we've grown to hate it haven't we and it's not just that it's that when the bed's down your living space is gone yeah so if i'm sat here if you can drop the bed down babe okay me <laughs> see you <laughs> yeah you can drop it down a little bit more if you take the cushions out of the way yeah but um you can see that that's where i am so if bet wants a bit of a kip in the afternoon or one of us does in the afternoon you know, you obviously want it blacked out, so you're sat here in the dark. <laughs> and you you can't even see the TV no. because the TV's over that side higher. See, the TV's up there. So all you can do, if you want to, is just sit here with your laptop, earphones in, Yeah. sitting in the dark. And so, crawl under here when you want to brew. And... Yeah, so you're kind of like this, trying to get under it. <laughs> and this is the same in the middle of the night, but in the in the nighttime configuration you'll have the ladder here yeah so then you've got to try and so get through Beck's there. trying to because Beck sleeps on that side I sleep on this side so I'm nearest the door in case we get intruders but so you're trying to scramble under here at the middle of the night then you're knocking the, um, the, ladder. the ladder out of the way so it's just really really uncomfortable yeah. both at night and if you want to keep in the day yeah so that's the big negative about it a drop down bed yeah another thing to bear in mind if you are very tall you know I, i'm quite tall <laughs> five seven <laughs> yeah but if you are quite tall the, the bed will go up a bit more babe just shove it up a bit more okay. now we've got a duvet on there so you've probably got in the region of about three inches on the top of my head and two maybe seven. yeah so you could send it up another inch, but if you if you if you're sort of six foot five ten five eleven, you might start to yeah. have problems in this fan. So that's something to bear in mind. We do actually have two duvets on there because the mattress it comes with isn't great at all. So we use a um, we use a double duvet, don't we, mm. with a cover on it, and put that over the mattress. That becomes our sheet, and then we have our duvet on top of that. We did say this was about the lounge, didn't we? <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's kind of gone into the bedroom. Yeah, but anyway, back to the lounge then. So that's the issue with the bed. The storage under here though is quite good. You can't overload it though. Just say three kilograms. So you've got to be mindful of that because when you're pulling, pulling the bed back up, it'll strain your motor. In here, this is worth noting. Mm. We've had a few occasions where, because we've got the mattresses on the bed, when you pull duvets. the bed, uh, yeah, the duvets, when you've got the duvets on the bed and you're trying to pull the mat uh, the bed back up if you keep pressing your finger obviously it'll trip out and one of the things that trips out is this little fuse here now it it baffled us on one trip and we thought we'd blown everything we went outside and changed all the fuses it didn't respond and what had happened is you've got a little button on the side there that clicks out you just have to push that back in and then the bed will operate again. Yeah, we were apparently these beds don't go wrong very often. If it, if it goes wrong, it generally is just a fuse. Yeah, and again, you've got the same on that side. These are slightly bigger because your motor is housed in that one over there. Yeah. This space here, you've got a nice bit of. Well, we, we kind of use them as bookshelves. Yeah, we have we had them filled with DVDs and other things, but it's. We're actually trading this in on Monday, that's why all the stuff has been moved out. So we've only really got the bare essentials in it for this trip, haven't we? But that's quite nice. It is, and it's worth saying that you can have your DVDs and your books in here and they do not fall out in transit. You don't have to pack no, them or anything. No, because you've got a lip here and a lip here which holds them all in. Yeah, so that's really so nice. So that's excellent. Mm. 
this is a really good size shelf you can see how deep it is there because we've got one of these great big atlases. Yeah. Look at the size of that. Yeah. You know, so plenty of space mm. up there. And over here you've got a big opening light, so that sort of cantilevers out, giving you ventilation. You've got the blackout screen. You've also got the fly net as well. These captain seats are great, really comfortable. Are a little bit fiddly though. We've noticed that on the Fiat Ducatos you can do it in one swift sort of movement because the bar that enables the seat to come back and forward turns with the seat on the Fiat Ducato, mm. doesn't with the Ford. The bar that moves the seat forward and back remains at the front, and you just have this little bar here, that one, turn you on that enables you to turn the seat and rotate it. What about the table, babe? Because we love this table, don't we? I think we mentioned earlier that the table that comes with the van is far too big. It completely fill this space and you can't get around it. Yeah. So you, this was your solution, wasn't it? Yeah, so what we've done is we've purchased a, a lagoon table. A lagoon. Yeah. Yeah, so what we had to do to fit one of these was just put one of these plates onto the side of the bench seat behind the passenger. And then the leg fixes into it, like so. And then, babe, do you want to put the table on? That's and that. the table goes on top, and you've got your your table. We've got a bit of space down here, which um, is ideal for having these little pull-out baskets. So we keep all of our dog gear in there and they're quite deep as well aren't they and shoes the reason we've got that space there is because this is a, a proper four berth van in the sense that i don't think you'd want to sleep four people in it really but you can drive with four people so your seat belts are here and this little cushion comes out and then that's your yeah. your foot space you see so that's but that's actually really useful that storage for us under there isn't it so something i should show you is the sergeant which i just have to take these seat covers off here to get to it there's just a little removable panel there and then this will slide forward to reveal your sergeant meter we just keep a few of the instructional manuals and other bits and pieces to go with the, the meter in there but there you've got all of your MCBs, your main MCBs for your sockets, your extra socket, extra socket one, and your fridge. And then you've got all of these little micro or miniature fuses for all your other bits and pieces there. Good to know where that is. And then the other side, if you are taking passengers, that's what you need to remove in order to create your two belted seats on this side. They're not the most comfortable for long journeys but I suppose they'd be okay for little kids if you're taking grandkids but then in terms of storage again you take that large seat cover off and as you can see underneath there's, there's nothing really in terms of storage under here that you can use you've got all of your some isolating gas points under there access to your your dump off valve there but you know it I wouldn't suggest storing anything in there and then on this side if I can get it up again you've got another little cupboard you might choose to use that for things that aren't regularly used but it's a bit of a faff to try and get into it so you might just want emergency supplies in there or something like that. And this area here does uh, turn into another double bed supposedly. We've never done it because it is an incredible faff. But also this isn't a four person van in our opinion. It's, it's, it's plenty to have two in. But maybe if you were uh, parents with a couple of small children. Yeah, you can bring the bed down so far and then 
have a space for them down here. I think here. it would feel quite claustrophobic though because you're pulling that whole bed down to quite a low level because you've got to have it at least here so that it doesn't give you much space. No. So, so technically it's a four birth but we think it's really a two yeah. birth don't we? Yeah. Well it's only a six metre van, it's only a little van isn't it? Yeah. So should we take the cushions off? Yeah. Because we've had a question haven't we about yeah. how low the bed will go so we'll take the cushions off drop the bed down and then measure it. That's about it because you... Yeah. So they're fairly tall now. So that's as low as it's going to go. I thought it went lower than that, but that is as low as it's going to go, isn't it? And at that height, you won't yeah. be able to use the ladder, it's worth noting as well. Yeah, because those cabinets now are on the actual seat cushions. Yeah, so the bed height... That's what we meant about the, um, the mattress. That is the mattress, and we didn't find that particularly comfy. So we use a duvet for, a, for our mattress cover. So to the top of the mattress, from the floor, is approximately a metre or 40 inches. Yeah. But it's how, about a metre. But how would you get on that? Because you're not going to be able to use the ladder now, are you? No, I think you would have to... You'd have to have some sort of little step. I suppose you could, you could kind of <laughs> do it like that. Was that easy? If you it's all right for me, but if you've got mobility issues, you're not going to be able to do that. No. You know, because you've got to put your your leg under there. Yeah. To to kind of lift yourself on. So. Actually, that's not too bad, really, for me. I prefer that to getting up and down on the ladder. Really, do you? But the fact is, you've got to take your cushions off now. Yes. We like to cover ours. Yeah. And to get the covers back on once the... Uh, I know it was fairly easy to take them off, but to put all that back round... It's a bit of a faff, yeah. We just like things to be very efficient and quick, don't we? Yeah. But I like that. That gives you loads of space then. But you're obviously not going to be able to sleep people underneath if you have it that low. No. So if you are grandparents and you want it low, you definitely can't take your grandkids. Yeah. Unless they're really small. <laughs> right, another little thing that we thought of that we've never actually done, but you've got a good little space under there. Mm. You know, look at the, the space there. Now, if you've got any valuables, passports and stuff like that, that you didn't, you know, you wanted to take abroad with you, but you didn't want to take them out on a daily basis, and you maybe haven't got a little safe or anything in the van, we thought what you could do is put all your valuables under here, pull the bed up, and then take the key out. Because once the key's out, you can't move the bed up and down, can you? No. So an intruder couldn't get the bed down, and you, you, yeah, we thought that was a good idea. Good thinking, babe. Now, the windows of the van, they're all insulated. You know, so you've got two, two sets of plastic with a void in between, so they are double glazed. Um, so that's great, really warm. The only thing we have noticed with these is, because they're not, because they sort of sit onto the outside of the bodywork of the van, we've thought it could be a, a security issue. Because on some of the vans you get um, windows that actually sit into the bodywork. I think these are the cheaper style, but what you can do is um, you, you, can, you can get your finger through there to the outside. So somebody could get a tool in and potentially knock those open. Now on some vans, they have a little security button as well on there that you have to press in to open it. Ours doesn't have that. We've never had any issues at the moment, but I'm just highlighting it because that could potentially be a little bit of a security issue. Now you can get things that slide over the handles like a little metal device, only a few quid off eBay or Amazon, and it just stops the handles being lifted. So that's something. Hmm. The habitation door, lovely quality door, just not quite wide enough for us. I, I know some of them you can get them wider, but as you go in through, you can see there that <laughs> You have you to know. go sideways. So what, what you tend to do is you have to turn onto your side and go out back ways like that. Which is no biggie, but it's just something to, to be said. On some vans you get an extra wide door, so you can actually come through the door without having to... Yeah. I think that's pretty standard though. That is a standard size door for, 
for, for most fans, isn't it? Yeah. We just like the, the extra wide ones. Obviously, you've got the fly screen, which is great for in your summer. You've got a window in the door, which is nice. Yeah, that's really important for us. I like the window mm. in the door. I think if you don't have the window in the door, it can feel quite enclosed and dark. Mm. And obviously you can't see who's on the other side of it as well. Mm. And you've also got the, the blackout blind. Yeah. This one is on an automatic lock with the Ford. So you, you put your central locking on it and it will lock that into place like that. Yeah. When you're in in, night, in the night and you want to go out, you just pull it to the open position and you can go out. Then when you come back in, you just push that and it locks it. So one bit of advice that we could give, if anybody's buying an auto trail, certainly the F60, I know that this feature is on this particular van because it caught us out in Southport the first time we went out. We got locked out of it and we had to get the AA out trying to pick the lock. And the locks are unpickable on these vans. Um, Thankfully, we got my sister to drive an hour and a half to bring us spare keys so that we could get back into the van. And it's all because we didn't know about this particular feature and we hadn't downloaded the Ford app. So whatever you do, if you get one of these, download the Ford app, it'll save you bacon. Yeah. What it does, if you unlock the habitation door, like that, and what happened with us was, I was taking my boots off, I took my keys, put them inside, and then thought, oh, rather than letting all the hot air out, because it was January, I'll just close the door. And take your shoes off outside. And this is what happened. Did you hear that? Oh my goodness. That was my response when it happened in Southport. We just looked at each other, didn't we, and said, what was that? Neither of us had got keys at this point. Thankfully, we had kept our phones in our pockets. But it's got a, a security mechanism so that if you unlock the habitation door and then close it, it'll yeah. lock itself. So it locked us out, the flipping thing did. So what you need to do, download the Ford app. I'll show you a picture of that now. So the reason the Ford app is such a lifesaver is because if you set it up before you're in trouble, uh, because you need to have your key, you need to be sat in the driver's seat in order to set it up. Did you hear that then? Just done it again. It just locked. You've got your keys, haven't you? Yeah. Good. Um, if you set up the app before you're in trouble, then you can unlock the van remotely from the app and that's why it's such a lifesaver. But you can't do it after the fact. You have to have the key and be in the driver's seat in order to set it up and go through a few like security things. Um, the other great thing about having the app is if you have any issues with your van, any faults technically, Ford will know about it if you've got the app. So we had some issues with the van. We had four pistons replaced for, for something. But an error code comes up and because we had the app, Ford knew exactly what the issue was. So we would recommend getting that app and downloading it and linking your van to it as soon as you possibly can. Another thing that we've found, or Rebecca has, is that when she gets in, I know there's lots of headroom, but she always manages to <laughs> smack her head on this. I've no idea how. Uh, but you have, done, you have done it as well, though, haven't you? Yeah. You think, I, how on earth does your head get over there? But on like, every I, trip... I suppose it's because you're turning to come in, and you, and you sometimes do that and smack it straight into the centre of your head. Yeah. Nearly knock yourself out, so... On every trip, at some point, one of us will bang our head on, on that. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are in, in the cab, Ford cab, and this is exactly the same cab as you'll get in the Ford Transit Custom, and we love it. So we've got the multifunctional steering wheel with cruise control, speed limiter, we use that loads, you can answer your phone. Um, it's the basic cab that you will see in any Ford Transit, but, it, but it's perfect. I think what we particularly like about it is the seating position, it feels like you're in a car. When we um, have tried Fiat vans, um, which are also lovely, the seating position is much higher and it feels like you're looking out of this part of the, the screen, but in the Ford, it, feel, it feels very much like you're in a car. So I think that's what we like the most about it, isn't it, babe? The, mm. the seating position. Can you see that? Yeah. So it's just, it's just got the little central bit that's digital. Then over the top here, you've got a little bit that comes out. You can either put an iPad in there or your phone. It doesn't fold all the way down, so it's not always the easiest thing to see if you've got something in there. No. 
but you can Bluetooth your phone to this and have all your maps displayed here. One thing that we do find with the manual, and a lot of people say this, is when you're getting onto your little chocks on site to level your van up, you've got more control with the manual than you do with an auto. Some people might disagree. If you do, drop us a comment and let us know why we're wrong. Yeah, but we would, personally, we probably would prefer an auto. Yeah. So that's our little review of the Auto Trail F60. We've loved having it, haven't we, for the last nine yeah, months? Yeah, I think we've fallen into in love with motorhoming in this van, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. Um, for us, there's been lots and lots of pluses, but there's been a few too many negatives as well. So that's why we are changing it. But that's we're only not, for we're us, not going to get yeah. into that now, though, are we? No, but that's only for us. I think for somebody else with different needs, it could be the perfect van. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gutted, aren't we, really? No, I'm, I'm not gutted. I'm looking forward to the next one. I'll be gutted to hand those <laughs> keys over. But I'll be equally as um, emotional to get the new keys. Right. Uh, shall we do this again? Because that's just really weird. <laughs> and, and... Well, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Bye.